Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming out here to Hollywood on a Thursday night. It's yeah. great, great weather here for uh, November. So suck it, internet, everywhere else in the world. <laughs> uh, it's like 70 degrees today, so deal with it. Uh, we're super, super thrilled to have you guys here uh, for the Machine of Death, the super stupendous Machine of Death Magic and Variety Show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So a couple things. Um, if you want to tweet during the show, it's fine. Use the hashtag Machine of Death. Zach is going to be watching the stream, and if there's any particularly good ones, we might mention them later in the show. So uh, that goes for you guys at home as well. Uh, tweet using Machine of Death. Uh, Matt at M. Bernardo is also uh, watching along, and he can give you all the inside scoop. But he's not here, so he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how, how good it feels, right? To be here in Hollywood. Ow! Yeah. yeah, all right. I like that attitude. So um, the reason we're here is because I thought it would be fun to put on a show. And uh, I have a lot of very talented people who decided, yeah, this sounds like fun. Let's do it. And I think that's kind of the best way for anything to happen ever. And I'm, I'm so thrilled that you guys agree and that you decided to be a part of it. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Ryan North. Ryan. Hello, hello. Hello, Ryan. Watching from Canada, up past his bedtime. Uh, thank you very much right. for being with us, Ryan. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me over the internet. Yeah. See, this is how we do it. This is how it works. Um, Ryan, of course, uh, six years ago now, invented uh, or uh, had his, his uh, T-Rex character come up with an idea that was so good, even Ryan didn't know it at the time. <laughs> Um, but, <laughs> but hundreds of people uh, have collaborated to make the Machine of Death something that's far, far bigger than anything that, that Ryan or myself or in, even all of the 65 contributors to the first book combined could ever accomplish. So, uh, Ryan, I think you should say thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan, is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, otherwise, we will check in with you in a little bit. I just want to say it's uh, awesome. I, I can't tell how many people there, but I can judging by the laughter I heard. There's thousands. There's there. literally thousands. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's for me too. Thank you very much. So uh, I would like to introduce now, uh, all the way from the Magic Castle in Hollywood, uh, Pop Hayden. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much. I love working here at the big gallery. <clears throat> Magic is fake. <laughs> you didn't know that? It is. Magic is fake. Uh, if you'd like, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think there's any point trying to, to fool a clever bunch of people like that. I thought maybe tonight, instead of trying to trick you and deceive you, if I actually taught you step by step how some of the classic feats of magic are performed. Would you like to learn? Yeah! How to First, I'll do the trick, and then I'll show you step by step how it was accomplished. You have to pay close attention. We take a silk scarf, place it into the hand. The idea is to get it in as tight a ball inside the hand as you possibly can. Now, once the scarf is all the way inside the hand, you simply say the magic words, Sim Salabim. Suddenly the scarf is gone and its place is an egg. The scarf has traveled all the way over here. <laughs> well, it's actually kind of a stupid trick. <laughs> no, seriously. The secret is the magician has two of these red scarves, one of which is hidden inside. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> now, you have two scarves, you have an egg, the contents of the egg have been removed. <laughs> this is very important. <laughs> Make a mistake here, you'll mess up your scarf. You leave a hole inside the eggshell about the size of your thumb. You have one of the scarves hidden from the very beginning of the trick 
in a tight ball down inside your pocket. Since no one knows the scarf is down there, it gives you what we call in our profession the element of surprise. You shake the scarf around, stick it right inside the eggshell. Since no one knows you have an eggshell hidden inside your hand, that gives you a second element of surprise. Does everyone follow so far? Yeah. I say the magic word since Alabama drop the egg. You reach in your pocket, you get the scarf. You've done a magic trick. That's all you should. Now, there is one problem with this trick. Occasionally, there is some uh, wise guy in the audience who wants to see the egg. You can't let him see the egg, of course. That tends to give the secret of the trick away. Everyone would see the, the hole. <laughs> what you have to do is this. If someone asks to see the egg secretly, don't let anyone see you do this. Secretly, you peel that hole off of the egg <laughs> and hide it someplace inconspicuous. This will throw most people off. If they, if they want to look at it closer, you can let them look at it. <laughs> Another trick that you may have seen a magician do at one time or another is where a piece of rope is cut and put back together again. I'm going to do the same thing, but once again, I'm going to show you step by step how it's done. Before we start, I'd like to have someone from the audience thoroughly examine this piece of rope, make sure it is in fact what it appears to be an ordinary, unprepared piece of rope. Would you, would you go over every inch of that, okay? Make us that all the time. <laughs> Look at it closer than that. Make sure there are no uh, trap doors, no mirrors, no hidden assistance. Doesn't stretch. <laughs> You're done. Oh, oh good. Right. Seem like an ordinary piece of rope to you. <laughs> Obviously it is. Because otherwise I wouldn't have let you look at it. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> it's just a piece of rope like you'd find in any bedroom. The secret <laughs> What? <laughs> the secret to this trick is not in the rope. It's in a special knot that magicians have kept secret for hundreds of years called the Mongolian Top knot. I'm going to teach you step by step how to tie this ancient and venerable knot. The first step is to measure the rope carefully. You want to make sure that when you cut, you get two pieces of rope exactly the same length. <laughs> to put these back together again, you tie a Mongolian pop knot. Here's how it is tied. You take one rope, twist it around the other rope like this, come back over this way, come around, come through, and pull tight. You go back and forth the same way as you went in and out, and then you go in and out at the same time as you went back and forth. You twist, come around, and pull tight. You have one Mongolian top knot. Everybody with me so far? Now at this point you simply reach in your pocket, you take some magic pixie dust, you sprinkle the pixie dust on the knot like so. In a few seconds, that pixie dust will cause the knot to dissolve and pop right off the rope, leaving you where you started from. <laughs> right Some of you may have had a hard time seeing exactly how to tie that knot especially those of you in the cheaper seats. <laughs> so I'm going to do this again. This time we'll cut the rope into three even pieces. That gives you twice as much chance to see how the knot is tied. <clears throat> Since it takes two Mongolian pop knots in order to put three pieces of rope back together again. Am I, am I going too fast? No. Yeah, that very seldom happens. Um, <laughs> now remember, when you try this, at home, make sure you cut all three pieces of rope the same length. If you make a mistake here, the trick will not work. For example, if instead of cutting three ropes all the, uh, the same length, you were to make a mistake and get one of the ropes, uh, say, just a little bit short, 
<laughs> the trick wouldn't work. You get one rope about right, say, and the other rope too long, the trick won't work. All three ropes have to be the same. <laughs> well, this could happen to anybody. <laughs> so if it happens to you, there is a way out. As long as I am teaching you the trick, I'll teach you what we magicians call a contingency plan. <laughs> you make a mistake cutting the ropes, you fold them over one at a time like this. Short, <clears throat> medium, and long. And you say the magic word, sim salivim. You have to say these with a certain amount of conviction. <laughs> sim. <laughs> well, it's a hard part of the trick, all right? <laughs> Sim. Salivium. <laughs> Suddenly the ropes begin to stretch and stretch and stretch like that, leaving you where you started from. Yeah. Okay. All right, now, back to the Mongolian pop knot. <clears throat> We take rope number one, rope number two, and I'm going to tie these together. Watch closely. I'll go slow. You take one rope, twist around the other rope like this, come back over this way, come around, come through, and pull tight. You go back and forth the same way as you went in and out, and then you go in and out at the same time as you went back and forth. You twist, come around, and pull tight. You have one. Mongolian pop knot. The second knot is tied the same way. You may want to take notes. Take one rope, twist around the other rope like this, come back over this way, come around, come through, and pull tight. You go back and forth the same way as you went in and out, and then you go in and out at the same time as you went back and forth. You twist, come around, and pull tight. You have two Mongolian pop knots. Is everybody with me so far? Good. At this point, you simply reach in your pocket, you take some magic. Pixie dust. Pixie dust, that's very good. Pixie <laughs> dust. Sprinkle the pixie dust, that's very studious. Sprinkle the pixie <laughs> dust on the knots like so. Any questions so far? Where do you get pixie dust? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, um, I grind my own. <laughs> <laughs> Send the kids out of the house because Pixies can make a hell of a noise <laughs> in the blender. It can be distressing when you're very young. Any other stupid questions? <laughs> the only way we're going to learn in a few seconds that Pixie dust will cause the knots to dissolve and pop right off the rope, even where you started from. a really great audience. I, uh, I wish I had a better act. <laughs> but I'll teach you another. I've discovered over the years a lot of times people will miss some step in a trick even when it's being explained from this great a distance. Sometimes it's helpful to have a little personal instruction. What I'd like to do is find some, some uh, spectator from the audience who would like to learn the world's oldest magic trick. We have a volunteer. Would you help me? Do you mind? Let's give her a big hand for her. My name is Pop, what's your name? Yvette. Yvette. Yvette, have you ever done a magic trick before? No. Excellent. I'm going to teach you how to do one of the world's oldest magic tricks. You have to pay close attention, okay? <laughs> Over 2,000 years old, the ancient miracle of the Chinese linking rings. Yvette, this is ring number one. This is ring number two. And this is ring number three. And this is ring number four. Four sisters with diamond hands of steel. You with me so far? Yes. Good. Which one is this, you bet? <laughs> Which one do you think it might be? I don't know. One? One is that right? <laughs> Can you guess this ring too? See, this is going to be a lot easier than you thought. <laughs> what I want you to do is pick the spot on your ring 
Any spot at all that looks like a solid spot to you, hold your ring just like this, so the solid spot will be right up here. That's good. Does that look like a solid spot to you right there? Yes. Did you notice any holes in your ring anywhere? No. <laughs> oh, right here. <laughs> because without this hole, the trick will not work, amen? <laughs> no, it won't. Without this hole, it wouldn't even be the ancient miracle of the Chinese Lincoln rings. Be the ancient miracle of the Chinese Lincoln hubcaps. <laughs> See, the idea is to take this hole and put it into that hole, which seems kind of odd when you think about it. In order for that to happen, solid steel has to pass through solid steel, the miracle of penetration. Just like this. Don't think this may be the best shot some of you ever get at this ancient mural. <laughs> Hopefully. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Now this is one solid steel ring linked to another. Solid steel ring. That's the first. That's the first part of the trick. Second part of the trick is to take the rings apart. You hold them just like this. You give them a spin this way, kind of a circular motion, and then you blow right here in the center, like this. Digitation in leisure domain over 2,000 years old, the ancient miracle of the Chinese linking rings. This here. Woo! Woo! This is ring number one. <laughs> this is ring number two. I want you to hold your rings up just like this. That's perfect. This is ring number three. This is ring number four. I'm going to hold mine up the same way. On the count of three, I'm going to count to three. When I reach three, I want you to drop one ring just like that. So it links into the other ring. Hold one ring tight, let the other ring just watch you put them. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three.
you're going to do, take the ring in your right hand, give it a spin so it goes sailing around this ring. It'll pass through right about here. Its momentum will carry it back towards your head. Loose <laughs> at a speed of about 20 miles an hour. <laughs> in order to avoid serious bodily damage, you have to take your right hand, thrust it through the ring as it comes around. If you miss, you're going to get bumped right on the knife. You understand so far? Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Ready? Get set. One, two, three, like that, it comes right off. Take that same ring. <laughs> Going straight up in the air like this. Catch it in the air just like that. So you look at you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a huge hand for Yvette. Now at this point, if we take these two rings and these two rings, we give a pull on them like this. We end up with four rings linked together in a chain. If I take one of these rings, pull it straight up like this, we end up with four rings interlocked. So that every ring is linked twice to two other rings. <laughs> when we blow on these, they go right through each other in the one long chain. When you collapse the chain, you, uh, you end up with three rings on one ring. <laughs> Which is impossible. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.